But it was like funny because I was like, I remembered it because it was such a weird program. It was basically right. teaching you. We're going to go ahead and, uh, my, I don't mean to interrupt. Okay? I'm sorry. But we're going to, um, I don't know, what you had to say is probably in 10 times more interesting than I had to say, really, but that's all right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be looking at um, chapter 6, PHP Object Oriented uh, PHP. And I know that many of you, if not all of you, have done object oriented programming or forced to through Java for sure. Um, so some of this will be really, uh, either will be nothing to you because you already know it. Um, some of it might be a little bit of review. Um, some of it, because I've had every student that I've taught this to, a couple of them have said, I never understood OOP until I took this. So some of you might help you with understanding this, the concept of OOP. So that's what we're going to be discussing today, how to do OOP in uh, PHP. As far as your projects go, um, you will of course get one tonight. And you'll also, I'll have your ones that you did uh, last night, that you finished last night or whatever. Um, I'll grade those tomorrow and if all goes well. So, um, <clears throat> object-oriented programming. So, again, I know a lot of you have had this, so I'm going to probably say things you already know, and that's just the way I teach this one. Um, but object-oriented programming is basically what you do is you're writing your code in these things called classes, and instead of having to rewrite code, rewrite code, rewrite code, you basically use these classes and you reuse code. So from a scalability con you know, context, it's, it's huge. Object oriented is absolutely huge because you're able to scale up because you can just add classes to things or you can reuse these classes. Everything that we've been doing so far in PHP, which has been very, very little, has been procedural. And PHP by itself is, it originally is a procedural language. It used to not have classes. What procedural means is you write it and it goes line by line by line by line by line. That's what procedural is. And so what happens with procedural programming is if you get into small stuff, it's actually easier than OOP. <coughs> when you get into big stuff, it's a disaster. Because you're writing all this, this procedural code and all these files, but there's no organization <coughs> to put it together to think, okay, we should probably have a hierarchy of classes and, and uh, do more things in more of an OOP way. And the reason I bring that up is because it kind of happened to me in my travels of going through programming. Um, I you know, took Java classes, but the time that I was doing the Java classes, I was actually working a lot in, believe it or not, PHP and languages like that. And I was writing really kind of smaller stuff, more web page based stuff, but nothing really huge, not, no really sophisticated applications, just pretty simple stuff. Um, kind of grinding my way through it too, because I was one of these self-taught PHP people, and so I was kind of learning a lot that way. And um, <clears throat> I never really grasped the concept of OP because I was learning it in Java. I used to hate it because I used to be like, you know, I'm writing all these, even the small <coughs> scripts. I got to write a class for this and do this and do this and do all this crazy stuff that I want to do is I want to output Hello World. I want to output something small. And PHP was great for me because, you know what, I can just write this procedurally and I'm done. It was so much easier. And I thought this was great until I got into big stuff. Until I got into writing applications that had sophistication to them, that did a lot of different things, and I also got into things where I wanted to scale it later. And I learned, oh my gosh, this is a big deal, all right? Um, and once I understood that concept, once it clicked with me, I started doing the bigger stuff, I went to OOP, obviously, and I never went back, because like this is the only way to go. I can give you an example. Um, in the first week, I gave you guys that little PHP MySQL test script. And one of the things that you guys had to do was a dbcon file. You guys probably remember that. That's just put in your information for dbcon. And then you had to do the SQL database and uh, connect to it. So, and you're going to learn what all those classes mean, actually, in this class. Um, but what the dbcon script is, is, of course, it's a class that basically does your database connection for you. All right? And um, that ties into another class, which is the PDO class, which we're going to learn about much later in this uh, semester. That ties the dbcon class and basically uses that connection to the database to actually do your SQL queries, okay? And, then, and, and that's kind of a long story. But anyway, the, the point I'm trying to make is that db connection class that I give you guys, I've been using literally from the, when I started doing the stuff in the field. I literally have had that thing for probably 15 years now, at least, I think. I think myself, but yeah, probably about 15 years, okay? Um, and here's what used to happen to me is, so where I worked, when I was at Eastern, this is when it would mostly happen, is I would be working on stuff and I had nothing to do with the servers. There's a whole IT department, they take care of the servers, I had nothing to do with them. I had access to them, I had whatever they wanted to give me, but that was it. 
And they were very good. I had a good relationship with them. So if I need to do whatever, I could talk to them, whatever. But I always suspected them because they got to do a lot of security implications. And one of the things that they would do is they would say, hey, we're going to change our database box on you. And it's going to now be this one over here. We're going to move all your stuff over. Um, but there's new connection information. And then for me, that was like a 30 second job, right? Because all I had to do is go to that DB conscript, which pretty much was the class that fed every single thing I had because I was running it all through um, that database. And uh, <clears throat> because I, I run everything off one database, which is multiple tables, I didn't have a very sophisticated system. But the thing is, is all I had to do is just go in, change that class with the new connection information, and we were done. That was it. Now, I have seen PHP where I have had web pages. And this is my, like the students have given me. I mean, I've seen this in production stuff. I can't believe it. And where you have, like, say you have five web pages or four web pages. So let's pretend like this is 20. But what they'll do is they'll write their SQL connection here, and then they'll write a whole bunch of SQL code here, all mixed in with the HTML. They you know, spaghetti PHP. They do the same thing here. They do the same thing here. They do the same thing here. And they do the same thing for the 20 other web pages that they have on this particular site. <clears throat> Guess what happens when you change your DB connection information now? Change all. You change everyone, that's procedural. That's the problem, okay? Good luck scaling this thing. Good luck changing it. Now it's a big pain in the butt and everything. So I just do copy replace. No, it doesn't always work that nicely. But if you have a class, which is what OOP does, and you have a database connection class, or whatever you want to call it, that's called DB, and that feeds all this stuff, you know, which is a much more secure way, because you can actually take the class file, and you can, if you want to, and there you got to do a couple of things. You can actually export it right off the public folder. So you, so th they can't even get to it if they wanted to, right? Even they would see it, but I'm just saying for security, you can actually do that. And then um, all you do, you know, speed knows these sites or whatever, and then all you do is you just change that, and your connection to your database is there. You may have multiple databases, and you can you know, update your class for that, right? Not a big deal. So <clears throat> um, that's kind of where OOP became huge and because I was starting to work on stuff that was bigger and that did exactly that, um, where uh, if I needed to change something, I could just go to that class that did it or to this that supported it or whatever, and then I started to develop that. The, the class I'm gonna give you guys, there's a few that I give you in this course. I give you uh, the PDO methods class when we talk about PDO. I'll give you that one, that's one that I wrote. Again, that's about 15 years old, it still works fabulously. Um, this validation class I have, there's a forms one I have for uh, uh, showing, uh, it's called sticky forms. <coughs> so, and you'll see as we evolve into this process that we're learning here <coughs> of how all this, these pieces fit together. And in the end, you'll be doing stuff where you'll have these classes and the classes that you work with uh, to fill this. So that's really what object-oriented programming is. And an object, in a lack of a better word, Basically, an object is an instance of a class. So you write this class, and class is kind of like a blueprint. And so let's say it's a blueprint for a virtual house. Well, if I make an instance of that blueprint of that virtual house, and I have an object that is virtually that house, okay? And so the way it works is we have a class that's written to do whatever. It doesn't really matter. But I have a class here that's written to do something. And then I have these objects that all become instances of the class, okay? Which means that they use this class to basically kind of build themselves. But now they're not a class in the sense that they're actually an object. <coughs> and an object is a thing. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, just to backtrack for just a second. Sure. I, uh, I don't know if you have an opinion, but vis-a-vis uh, -vis PDO, do you have any opinions for this class on using the Not really, right? What, what kind of thing are you thinking of? Like, oh, just like using any ORMs that run on top of PDO. What is an ORM? Um, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's an uh, object relational management. Basically, it's a it's a package. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do it depending on how what one you're using and what environment. In but where it you give a definition of an object that matches your database table layout, right? And it automatically will map what's in your database directly to an object in that language. Right, in this particular class, I won't want you to use them. I didn't think so. Because I, 
but not because I think it's wrong, yeah. only because I want you to understand the concept of what this is doing, and it keeps you on the same page, but I'll be honest with you, what you're talking about is obviously more sophisticated and a much better way of doing things. There's no two ways about that. As far as that all mapping stuff is actually really cool. Yeah, you know, so I can care less. Not in this case. But what you're doing your own, I can care less about. Yeah. You know, so. But it's not because I think it's wrong, so don't please don't think, oh, he thinks it's wrong. No, I just want to keep everyone on the same page. Okay, so back to um, what an object is. It's a basic, an object it can basically be anything, and in a sense it defines things. And what we have in objects is we have two, two basic things, okay? We basically have um, methods, this is basic, and we have properties, okay? And the way I always look at it is your methods are your actions. So these are your actions, and your properties are your I, they're your things. I kind of look at them as um, sometimes nouns, but since I'm like the worst English person known to man, um, probably not use that term right. But the thing is, is when you have a method, that's usually a function. Okay, when it's in, inside an object, they're called methods. When they're outside of objects, they're called functions. And basically, they're the exact same thing. In fact, you name them as function. But the thing is, is the method is something that's going to do. That's what a method is. Okay, something that's going to do. Um, you, ha you have a car class, and you accelerate that car, and you're pushing the accelerator. Okay, that's a method because that's an action. All right, um, but you have a color of the car, let's say red. That's a property. It's kind of like a noun. It's kind of like what's the color. Okay, so properties are kind of like the noun things. They're basically naming things when um, methods are actions. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And those are all kind of tie into um, objects. Which is kind of what I'm getting to on, on here. And I use a lot of this car class. So here's the properties right here. Here's the methods. And they kind of define as behaviors. Creating classes. So creating a class in PHP is actually really simple. It's just the keyword class and then whatever you're going to name your class. Now, a naming convention, it doesn't have to be done, but it's a good naming convention is classes start with an uppercase. Classes start uppercase. So if you can see, I have class car. The class name is uppercase. That's a naming convention. That's not an absolute, you have to do it. That's a naming convention because most people say, okay, it's uppercase, must be a class. It's just a naming convention uh, that they tend to do. And then after that, I usually do camel case. So I, if it was like, you know, big car, it would be B and then kind of C. So it'd be like written like that. I write it like this. That's me though. You can underscore, you can do the same thing with like any other variable names. But here's the basic class. There's nothing that's being, um, you know, we're not pulling any parent classes yet. We're just writing a, a class. And then your message and properties go here. And it just goes into these um, curly brackets. So here's a very simple example of what's going on. Now, when you come down and you do something like this, and so you have this class equals car. And then I have um, Vito equals new car and Mustang equals new car. So you see here is how I'm basically, I have the class of car. Here is how in PHP, I'm assigned, whatever variable I want to call it, that becomes the object of that class. It, it's making the instance of that class. So I have um, Vito, that's an instance of new car, and Mustang, that's an instance of new car. Okay? So <clears throat> one thing you need to understand that Vito and Mustang are two separate objects that basically derive themselves from the same class, but they're two completely separate objects, which means one has no relationship to the other in this context. All right? So, Beetle and Mustang, they have no relationship to the other. Even though the same class built them, they're two completely different objects. Okay? That's an important concept to understand because sometimes people get confused, students get confused at it, and they think, well, it's all the same thing. It's references. No, they're basically instantiated, instantiated two separate objects, completely different. Now, when you want to see an object, don't use echo. Use printr. Printr is done to output objects. It's done to output arrays. What if you want to see a member of... Then you can echo. That's different. So uh, you're talking like, like something that outputs? Like car, like dot color or something. Yeah, like that's, that's dot completely dot, different. Dot, yeah. yeah, that's completely different. We'll look at that. Um, <clears throat> but... Here, we're using printr and we're just popping in the object itself. Of course, what's the output going to be? Car object. And That's then, what it's so going to say. you don't need to make like a, its own private like method for printing it. It will just print out. Well, print well all printr is doing is saying it's an object. Okay. 
That's all it's really doing. It's not going to, um, I, I know where you're going with that. Just give me a second, I'll get to where you're going. Okay. Um, but in this case, that's what I'm, doing. I'm just saying, try to do echo. Echo will say, I, can't, I only produce strings, I can't do objects. Okay. Here it's basically saying that this is an object of, they're calling it the car object because it came out of the car class. That's all they're saying about that. But let's talk about this because where you're going, I want to discuss. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so again, we have um, properties, but we want to understand one thing here of PHP, and this is a very important table that you want to pay attention to, is uh, how you name your properties, okay, and methods. They're, they're <coughs> not just properties. So you have public. Any type of property, method, or property, doesn't matter, that is public in your class. So you name it as a public, so you go public function this, or public property this, okay, whatever it is. If it's public, it can be accessed by the code, which means I can make an instance of that class and I can directly access that variable. That's what public means. It means I can actually make an instance of that class, which means I have the object, and if I want to, I can literally change that property if it's public to whatever I want. Okay? That's what public means. Private means the properties, and when I say properties, I mean properties or methods. Other class can be accessed only by the code inside the class. So if you create something that's private, only that class can see it. The object making the instance of the class can't see it, the subclass can't see it either. Okay, it's private to just that class. Why do we do private um, properties especially? Well, because we want to use something like methods to actually get them and set them. They're known as getters and setters. Okay, so the reason we do stuff that's private is because then we have public methods that alter. We're going to have some code down here to give an example of what I'm talking about with that. Protected I means these properties are really like private properties and that they can't be accessed by the code outside of class. When I say code outside of class, what I'm talking about is an object. But there's one sort of difference. Uh, any class um, that inherits from, from that class can also access the property. So there's a protected property. It means the parent class, of course, where it's written can see it and the child class can see it as well. So three classifications, private, only within the class itself, usually the parent class, okay? Um, protected, a subclass can see it. Public, the object can see it. And that can be dangerous. The object parts can be dangerous, okay? And we'll discuss why. But this is important to understand. So to dec declare it's very easy. Just use the keyword. Public, private, protected. Remember, you can do this for functions too, okay? Public. Private, protected. For methods, I should say. <clears throat> so, this is basically class my class. Um, I have this little public um, property, it's 123. Um, if I want to access something, access in a property of a class, and once I've instantiated the class, it is most of you guys are used to dot syntax. There is no dot syntax here, there's this little arrow. So it's the object and then the property or method, either way. So let's take a look at this. I have this class car. I have um, color and manufacturer with it. I come down here and I go Beto equals new car. I have Beto color equals red. Beto manufacturer equals Volkswagen. So what I've done is I made this object of the, of the car. Okay, the car is the class. Beto becomes the object of it. Okay, so this is the object, and what I'm doing is I'm basically assigning the color of this object to red, the manufacturer of Volkswagen. I come down here, I have Mustang, I have Mustang, the color is green, uh, the manufacturer is Ford, and then I'm coming down here, and I'm just echoing out what they are. Okay, Beetle color, Beetle manufacturer, Mustang color, uh, manufacturer, and then you can um, print out these. And I can throw these on a piece of paper if you want to see it be happy to. But the thing is, I don't know if I had that one pre-written for you. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, guys, what I'm talking about is, come here, oh, not here, uh, for you guys, you're going to be here, you've got PHP OOP right here, there's a bunch of working examples uh, of stuff. Um, there's my public properties right there. Ah, there it is. Okay, I did write it. Okay. And then if you go to my uh, GitHub site, just so you know, you come here and you come to um, the PHP uh, 
OOP. There's all the there's all the code. So every example that I have on the website for you to see, you can look it up on the GitHub site here. This is actually very helpful to you guys because you guys there's tons of examples of how to do stuff. All right, and the booklets are actually linking off to them. So that particular one is right here. Okay, so if we look at the um, code on this, so we just look at the book and look at the code is, what you're seeing is the result of this, okay? And so when we uh, come back here and we do um, print R on it, whoa, wrong one. Um, because it had those two properties in there, it lists them here, lists them here, and it just shows what they are. What I'm trying to point out with this whole thing is, and when you look at the code, is that Mustang and uh, Beetle like I said before, these are two different objects. So they've basically made the, you know, they had those properties, they had access to the properties, the properties had no value within the class, so we assigned a value to them. That's why one can be red and the other one can be green. Because they're two different objects, they're two different things, they don't know. There's no different than two different cars out in the parking lot, they're not the same car. Okay, they're two different cars, all right? They're not the same car. They have different colors, they have different engines, they have different whatever. Um, <coughs> but, there's a problem with this, and we'll see it later, is you may not want this to happen. So if you create some sort of little widget class and it has properties in there, you may not want a developer to use your class and assuming that they can't just dig into it and change it themselves, but um, to use your class and just be able to update your properties. You might, but a lot of times you don't want that to happen. Okay, you want to use getters and setters, which we're going to look at a little bit later. But that's kind of what I'm talking about. Is this is a good example to show how it's doing it, but a bad example because you don't really necessarily want to do stuff like this. Okay, you want to leave your properties, usually you make your properties private, and then you have public methods to get them changed, usually. Not always, but usually. <coughs> Any questions about this before I go on? Biggest thing is just to see how this stuff sort of moves the arrow. And that's why I have all these examples so you guys can see this stuff. Static properties. Without you guys looking at it, what's a static property? Does it give you a shock when you touch it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay, good. No. What's a static property? Anyone? Uh, it's a property that is independent of the object. Yeah. It's associated with the class. Yep, absolutely. Which means you don't have to make an instance of the class to access the property. That's what a static is. Okay, there's static methods as well. So if you take a look at this one and we have a class, all you gotta use is that keyword static, and now it's static. Okay, and so if I want to access this my property, or in this case I'm assigning something to it, I can basically do so this is this is class, my class. Okay, um, I can, you know, I can echo this out. Well, here I'm assigning this. So I'm going to echo my old night class. I'm, a name, I'm naming the class that the property belongs to. Two colons. See that right there? My property equals one, two, two, three. So, let's say C plus plus one more time. Now. I know this, this is very similar to C plus plus. Is this if you wanted to like just make a function in the class to be able to access outside of it without making an object? Like I'm not understanding what the point of this. The point of a static? Yeah. Yeah. So the point of a static, whether it's going to be a method or a property, is exactly that. So you don't have to make an instance of the class. You can actually um, access, access access it directly. Access the function or the data or whatever. Yeah, and you, and you actually are changing it in the class. Okay. Which means if two things are accessing a static property at the same time in the same class. Can actually change the value of okay, class. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And there's situations where that actually comes in handy. Um, one is in my Android 251 class. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of good ones here, but in the Android, there's one where it really it's really strong. So that's that's what it's all about. Okay, is it's just static, and that's what they they mean. Is you don't have to make an instance of the class because if you make an instance of the class and you have an object, now what just happened? Well, now I have an object that's its own little thing, and if it needs to, you know, update that for whatever reason. You need to update everything within the app. Yeah, it basically is like, it's not, well, it's not going to affect anything else that calls it. Yeah. Because it's updated, because it's just within itself now. So that's kind of what you're, what you're doing. So if you come down here, um, again, 
Uh, I got the static number sold 123, and you see how I do um, car number sold plus plus right there? So I'm incrementing by one, okay? And then if I echo out car number sold, it's basically going to change this to 124. Just like that. Until um, when? Until when? Like when does this no longer in, a, in PHP land, the way we work on it with servers, how long does this actually happen? Done. Yeah, good. When the program's done executing, this is forgotten. This is where it's different than Java, especially where you guys are writing applications. Because in Java land, maybe C land too, but I don't know C land, so I don't know. You can tell me, uh, or C land. But the thing is, is in uh, in Java land, when we're writing desktop applications, variables hang around for the life that the application is running. That's what they do. Statics included. They, they hang around for that entire life. Now, this confuses the living heck out of especially Java programmers when they're first learning this stuff and going to the web, okay? Um, <clears throat> but if you think about it, what is actually happening with the PHP script? Well, we have our little computer or our browser that sends a, a request for a file on the server, and let's pretend it's a PHP file, and that server is going to find that file, which is going to be some sort of script like this, it's going to run it and it's going to return whatever, usually some block of HTML to update. That's the whole, that's kind of the whole point when it comes to the web at least. And so once it's done and it ships this, that's all dead. Gone. It doesn't live, in, in, but that's a, an interesting concept because what you have to understand is when it comes to web pages, it's web pages here. Web page A has no concept or idea about web page B. So you're saying not the whole time you're connected to the server, it's just the one time you ask for the information, basically, or the one time the server sends you the cookies or like. Once it once it once it sends that back, once it sends a request back, it's done. It's done. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to say is, when you go to web page A, and then you go to web page B, There's you made two calls to the server. They they have no relationship to each other. We're going to look at how we make them actually do talk to each other, but it's a different... By default, problem. they're not doing anything. By default, yeah, nothing, okay? And that, so if you have this, have a whole bunch of variables that it creates to do whatever, who knows? And this one, too, this is when students get confused because they think, well, I had variable X over here, and I should have a variable X still alive over here. That's what I'm saying. They think, oh, when I recall that page, that variable should still be alive, or that class should still be alive, that object should still be alive. No, it's not, it's all dead. Okay, but on an application, if you have two pages in your application, right, this is an app, together, no, they're alive. Yeah. Because it's just two different views of the same app. Hmm. Completely different concept. The Android, for example, in my Android class, we do apps, we do phone apps. And you can absolutely have two views like this that can access the same data points until that application dies, until this dies, that stuff's still around. In PHP web server world, no, uh -uh, there is no app. It's basically independent. And I know I'm getting things a little off base of the OOP thing, but I'm trying to really hound that home to everybody because a lot of students get confused with that. The web is a beast, it's own little beast. It takes five languages at minimum, unless you do a Node.js, to be a full stack developer that you need to know. Five, at minimum, at minimum. What is Node.js? <coughs> no JS is JavaScript on the server. Okay. Very insecure. It's vulnerabilities. <laughs> J J Jason has his own opinion about it. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I kind of hate it in a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you, you need to know, and I'm just saying this, you need to know JavaScript. This is minimum to be a full stack developer. You need to know JavaScript. Uh, you need to know some sort of backend language like PHP. You need to know HTML, which is in a programming language, a markup language, but still, you need to know CSS, which again is a programming language. It's, I don't know really what to call CSS, except what it is. Um, and then you know, some sort of database, which is using MySQL or MariaDB. But it's all going to be SQL based. It's going to be fun to some sort of relational database. So I'm trying to say this because <clears throat> that's a whole different beast than I'm going to write Java apps. Because then you just know Java. Here you got to know a whole bunch. So I'm just trying to say it's different. And I, again, I'm not trying to be cool about it. It's mostly I just want you guys to kind of get it. Okay. Constants, not a big deal here. To find a constant, use the const um, keyword, C-O-N-S-T. And then you write, now this is another naming convention. You don't have to do it. But my const 
if it says uh, if it's a constant, it means it's not to be changed. You can't change it. If you write my const in capital letters, that's a naming convention. When it's all caps, that tends to mean it's a constant. The reason they do these naming conventions and try to keep them across the board is because developers, you know, someone writes it and then that project gets handed off to someone else or whatever. Well, you can just by reading the, the name itself can pretty much figure out what it is. If it starts with a capital letter, I know it's a class. If it starts with, a, with if it's all uppercase, it's probably a constant. Even though I know you'll probably see it anyways, but I'm saying that's the reason behind the naming conventions. So that's what I'm trying to do with you guys, just to introduce it to you. So you can see my class start with a capital M, but my constant was all caps. Will it work if you don't do that? Absolutely it will. Absolutely. Look at Jason, he's pulling himself off the table there. I'm teasing him, I'm just teasing him. Okay, uh, here's just a little bit of code. It's kind of a goofy one. Um, I did write this one in my uh, PHP site. Um, I actually wrote it today. It's just this one right here. Um, and all it does is it, it's not really kind of stupid. It just, by using this constant right here, um, we do constant hashback. Here's how we grab it, believe it or not. Getting the property of it right here with the colons again. It's almost like a static. And basically, what it will do is it's going to go through here. It's going to send type through here, read this one, two, or three, and then echo out what it is. And so it just echoes this whole thing. It's a goofball. Uh, if you ask me, it's a goofball little script. Um, but uh, it's right here. And it just says this. But that's one way constant would be used. That's a way constant would be used. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to give an example, but not to say it's an absolute. Just here's an example. <coughs> Working with methods, method vis visibility, well, that's the same that we just talked about. So properties and methods from a visibility standpoint, same thing. Public, private, or protected. Usually your methods, not always, as I will show here, uh, usually your methods are public, but sometimes you, you make them private. So what happens is you have a public method that calls a private method of the same class. That's not uncommon. Okay, to where, you know, this, this method actually calls that method up there. But that method's private, and this one's public, for whatever reason. <coughs> so, here's where we do public function A method. You write your code there. Again, um, it can take parameters. You'll see this in a minute. Um, to call the methods, it's just like calling the property. Just call it right there. Okay? So, in this one right here, um, we have a class public function called hello, it echoes out hello world. We have object equals my new class. Um, object that hello, what's it gonna do? Well, basically, it's calling this public function here, it's gonna echo out hello world, big deal. Okay, but it's just an example to show you. We're gonna see later where, I, I think I have something highlighted in my book a little bit later where I talk about this echo business right here. So I'm gonna talk about that, just hang on. Um, adding parameters, returning values, basically, um, the same as most languages, just put the parameters in there, just like our functions that we looked at last week. You can do optionals, um, all the same stuff. And then, of course, um, if you return, don't, ref don't forget that if you return something uh, out of a uh, function, that stops all code at that point. Once it returns any code you write after that in, in the same function, like anything I write here, it's not going to run. That stops it. Also, this is, I wrote this here, the parentheses are not needed. Just so you know, this you don't have to write return something put something in parentheses. You, you don't do that. That was me trying to write it to show here's what you do. And just out of curiosity, do you have um, defaults like you do in Python or like ways where you can say like you can name it and say this equals this? Like uh, color ooh. equals red when you're calling it, or do you have to do it in the correct order of the parameters? Oh yeah, you can actually yeah. If you look in the functions, we we had that. Well, you can actually um, like you can either pass an object where and then it, it will take the object and read it, or you can do um, where you name the parameters. Yes, you can actually do that. Okay, you can go ahead. Yeah, you can do name parameters. That's in the in the last chapter in the previous basics in the functions. Mm -hmm. there. Um, actually, in uh, <coughs> object properties from methods. Okay, so basically um, this one, I have. Uh, a public reading called hello world, and I use this to be private, but I'm just giving the example. I have public function hello, and then I'm going echo, and I'm using the keyword this. So notice how this is done. Now in most cases, that would be private. That would be the whole point. But 
we have this public function called hello. And what it's doing is it's going to echo out. We're using the keyword this, which means referring to this, this object because this is an instance of the class. But you notice how it goes dollar sign this arrow and then the function name without the dollar sign, but yet the fun or the property name, I'm sorry, but notice the property name has a dollar sign up here. Hmm. That's a trick that gets you. Is that a C++ thing? C++ thing? I'm just curious. What do you mean? Where they do something like this with the this keyword, the dollar sign in front of the this. There's no dollar sign. Oh, there's no dollar, okay. So um, you go dollar sign this, and then you do this arrow and then greeting. So this function here is inside the class. Function is inside the class, all right? And so what's happening is um, we have it, it's echoing, what's it doing? It's going, I could write my class greeting just as well, but I write this referring, of course, to this. And this is that kind of like a pointer? Form. What's that? Is that kind of like a pointer? It's not a pointer, it's basically what this is, is referring to this, <clears throat> it, because it gets instantiated, it's referring to that object itself. Yeah. But if we look at it from the class, this is basically that. Okay. okay, so it's basically saying I'm looking for something. I'm looking for greeting that's inside of this class somewhere. Okay. It, it's a reference. If yeah. Yeah. They use the arrow in C++. You use it uh, if you have like a pointer. Yeah. And then you can access a function. Yeah, it's a little within the function. instead of the dot. If it's a reference, basically you use the yeah. You use that. Yeah. Okay, because in um, they, in they PHP, if you name it with the and in front of it. I had this in my other one. That's when you pass by reference. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a little different. Very C++ though. Plus about. Yeah, so that's a little different. Very, oh, yeah. it, it, from what it, whatever a student tells me, I'm not, I've never done C++, I don't know. I haven't so. done PHP in so long. This is such an off-topic question, really. But, uh, <clears throat> are objects passed by reference in, by default? Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure if by yeah. default they are. That's a good question. Wait, don't you have to that specify that if you're passing well, by reference? If you pass by reference, you, you specify with the and yeah, sign. Yeah, it, so it goes the and dollar sign. And that would be passed by reference. It doesn't the value if it's, without, if it's outside of the class when you call the function. So it, that makes, so yeah, it's by default I'd say reference, right? They're not going to sorry, by value. Because it's I, think, I, think, I think by default it is by value, but I, mm -hmm. and to be honest, I have to look up the 100%, but I'm pretty sure that's what... But our class is by default by reference. So. That might be... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's true. So. I don't think classes in PHP are our first class construct. As in, when you say first class construct? I mean, you can't pass yeah. around a class at, like a, as a value. No. Yeah. Because, no. like, jobs are... Um, anyway, here, here's another one where uh, it, it's the same type of thing, except that um, what I'm kind of showing here is we have uh, this one where I'm calling now another function. Okay, so I have this class, I'm calling uh, public function hello, and uh, it's echoing out this get greeting, but then what it's actually doing is it's calling another function up here. Now, normally that would be a private function or a private method, okay? So all it's doing is using the public one to call, usually, usually a private one. But I want you to notice that here it's returning hello world to what? To whatever it called it. And then it's echoing it out. So I'm just showing you that because that happens. But I want you to notice this because this is um, true. In these examples, we're using echo in the class, but in most cases you return a value from a method and echo that return value when the method is called from the object. So in a lot of these examples, I have my class, I'm echoing out something when you call a method and I just write echo and whatever it is. Okay, but in the real world, all right, you actually want to probably return that from a class. And the reason is, is because then the developer can decide what they're gonna do with that return value. If it echoes out, it just goes to the screen and that's it. What if I wanna make that return value go into a variable and use it later? Echo won't allow me to do that. So usually when you do a class, despite my examples, my examples are just add examples, but usually when you're returning or when you're doing a, some sort of function call you, in a class, you normally don't do this. You, you do this. Return it. And then let the developer decide. Because you remember, the developer, which might be you, is using that class, right? And so you want the developer to decide whether they're going to echo that out or not. Does that make sense? 
Okay. Here, I'm not giving them that option. I'm just going to spit it to the screen. Okay. So I made that, I kind of highlighted that because I was writing these examples and was realizing students were getting confused on that. You just wanted to show us what was going on here. Yeah, yeah, I'm just showing you what's going on. So here's an, exa here's an example of that. The same thing as here. But here, you see I'm echoing out this. Because by echoing out the actual map <coughs> here and returning it here, okay? So you can see this does the same thing, just not echoing here. Uh, it gives me the option as a developer, I can either echo it here or I can stick into a variable here and do something else with it. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. When you're doing just regular functions and you're doing procedure code, it doesn't really matter unless you're doing like sheets of functions to do stuff with, then that's different. But classes, just, and, and this is not a hardcore rule at all. This is just a Scott Shaper kind of a smarter way to do it. Okay. <clears throat> Static and methods, public static function, static method. If you don't put this in front of it, does it know to use? No, it won't. So if I just do dollar sign greeting, it's not gonna know that it's, that is my. I say that and they'll probably do it and it'll work just fine, but no, it's not supposed to. You're not to. supposed to, but it, it might work, okay, so. I'm not, you know what, I've never done it without actually writing this or writing the, the class itself, whatever the name of the class is, I can just write my class and do the same thing, right? But, You're saying within um, the function of, of, or within the method of the class is what I'm more worried about. Like, if since it's a method of the class, do, is the class smart enough to say? Yeah, that would be one I'd have to test to see if it would actually do it. I mean, we could write and test it and see if it would actually do it. That I don't know. Okay, I don't think it would. I think it would have a problem. It with would that. be like an undefined variable or something like that. Yeah, because the whole point of this is is refer is referencing to. Well, I know I get that yeah, you okay, want it yeah. to be very explicit. Right. Like right. in Java, you do that to say, you know, because you pass in the parameter of the same name and then you say this, you know, right. self dot or whatever. I don't remember if it's self or this. Or self, whatever. It's self, I think. I think. I, there's a self in here too. We'll use it for a little bit later. But it's the same idea, and then you say, yeah. okay, this dot, and then make it equal it, right? Right. And but so this is just like I say. I, I, I don't. That'd be something you could try to see what okay, you want to so do. Yeah. My my only caution. Let's let's pretend it does work. Okay. My only caution against that would be, um, <clears throat> sometimes little shortcuts like that can get really confusing later when you read your code later because it's like. I guess maybe if you knew that, then maybe not. But I, I've done that where I've done shortcuts on, like, especially variable naming and stuff, and then I forgot all about all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's late. <laughs> literally it seems six. Reasonable when you're doing it. But literally six you're months later. Idea, right? So yeah, I, I mean, I literally had to happen six months later, and like I have no idea what that was. Um, this is a static function. It works the same way as a static property. You don't have to make an instance of the class. You just name the class, do two colons, and call the method. Good. That's it. So if you declare the static here. You can call it directly there. That's it. Okay, no different than the static properties. Got this right here. Um, I got the static function for miles per gallon, and it basically you can it takes two parameters, miles and gallons. I can go echo car uh, calc mpg, which is that static. Got those two little dots there, and we got 168.6. So we're just passing two values and it's going to give me what the MPG is. All right, so that does not have to have an instance of the class. At all. Or, yeah, it doesn't have any instance of the class. Um, another one here, kind of doing the same kind of goofball stuff. Um, when you're uh, coming into this, uh, this is where I use that little self thing. Um, it says you can also use the self keyword, much as you with the, with the this with the objects, and so I'm doing um, self. Okay, so in this particular case, it's a little bit different. So I've got all this um, going on in here. Um, this is working fine with the colon, but what you, when you're getting into actually um, pulling it out of the class itself. So we have, uh, where do we want to? Yeah, we're here. So I have this class right here, and I have these statics, and what I'm doing here is the car's MPG is, and then we have calc MPG right there. So it's doing the same thing. Well, normally, if this was not static, what would we use? This. And we use the arrow. If it's the static, you gotta use self with the double colons. Or it doesn't wanna work. There's, there's where it's calling. So you're calling a static, it's stupid, I know. But you're calling a static within, um, uh, uh, you're calling another static 
inside the class. Oh, so with inside, oh, okay, that's? That's the difference. You're calling the static when it's inside the class, instead of calling just another function. See? It's stupid. Why you do it, I don't know. Well, but, well you could just, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm not saying it's, 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 it's like this brain, you know, great thing, but I'm just trying to say, um, in this particular example, this self keyword here, um, does call my own is pull yeah function. but if you try to do the uh the little this it won't work on the statics just what if i were to just, just call calc, calc mpg what's that what if i were to just call calc mpg and not put the self or any of that good code i mean any of the if you if you just found calc mpg yeah. here it wouldn't have no idea what to what oh, to do it just calc okay. mpg That's, from what uh, again weird okay i get it i'm good um it's just I know, I know that these examples, some of them are really stupid. Because it's like, why would I even do that? And it's like, well, I'm just showing you what you can do so you don't get tripped up. Thank you. I won't ask you to do anything like this, but ask me. All right. Um, is any of this, are you guys, everyone's still doing okay? Seriously. Yeah. Save? I don't get what the heck you're talking about. It's okay. Some of you are like so far beyond where I'm at. I'm <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Encapsulation. Now, this I think is one of the other really, really cool things with this whole object part stuff, is because what it's basically doing, and this is a good example of it down here, is what encapsulation does is basically saying I'm going to encapsulate all these properties and all these methods and everything in this one little, this is the way I use the vision, this one little <laughs> object, and it's going to do whatever. Okay. Um, and the whole point about encapsulation is, in theory, okay, in theory you're not gonna have variables crossing over. Like two variables of the same name? Two methods of the same name? Well, you can have two methods of the same name in two separate classes, it's perfectly fine. Because encapsulation, okay? Um, the other thing that encapsulation allows us to do is when we look at, say, this one, and this is a good example. It's, I know it's not a sophisticated banking example, but it's just to show you. So what we have is we have this class of account, and we have the balance. now. Right off the bat, this right here is another naming convention that you do not have to do. Okay, it will work no matter what. But most privates that you do, at least in PHP, private variables, they um, go dollar sign underscore and then they write the name. That dollar sign underscore is, de is designating, it is basically a naming convention to say this is a private variable. Naming convention, meaning don't have to do it, they'd like you to, to do it. Okay, it's a naming convention. That's why it just lets you know. It's like a yeah. specifier. Right? Yeah, it's just basically saying, oh, okay, that's, that's, even, I know, I know it seems stupid because you see private there, but if I pull this but somewhere later, else, when you're looking if at I it, saw that, if I saw that variable later written, yeah. then I would see, oh, the underscore must be private. That's all. That's all. Will it work either way? Yeah. I shouldn't okay. try to access this directly. What's that? Well, if you see that, you know you shouldn't try to access it directly. Right. <clears throat> right. Um, so public function make deposit. So we have this where we make the deposit, and it says this uh, total amount plus equals amount, and then public function make withdraw, and you know it basically checks to see if you have enough before it makes you do the draw. But I think this is um, a really in this one they're using the little die, and I don't like die that much. But basically what die does is it will just print that, which is kind of stupid. But there's better ways of there's better ways of doing it. But but it's, like, it's, yeah, it's just gonna exit and print that, which is kind of stupid, right? I would much, I do something better, but whatever. Um, I was just showing it at the time. Sometimes I write this stuff and I go, oh, well, that was, you know, whatever. So let's just take a look at this, though, because this is actually, I think, a really good, very simplistic explanation of kind of why um, all this encapsulation stuff works. It's because you don't want to have people have access to, say, if it's the bank. The bank surely doesn't want to have a software application where people can directly um, access and change their balance. Right. What if everyone could just grab this guy? <laughs> Man, I'm a millionaire today. Because all I got to do is start adding some ones and zeros to this thing and boom, I'm, I'm good, right? Yeah. Um, or, or whatever. So that's one of the problems um, <clears throat> is, is you can't just allow someone to open up. So the only way that you can do that is you just make a deposit. Now, granted, I could put $1 million here, but I need to be able to so hopefully produce that. But the thing is, is what this does is this is the getter and setter, okay? So this is basically a setter, and what it's doing is it's setting that private property. I can't access it directly, but through that object, I can call that 
uh, make deposit, and that make deposit could have other criteria in here to check what the heck I'm doing, and it's gonna add that amount to my private property. That's what I'm trying to say about those getters and setters, and how you're protecting those private properties from being directly accessed, because you don't want that. You want getters and setters to do it, why? Because there might be criteria that have to happen before it changes that. And in this case, that's exactly what they're doing. You can't make a withdrawal for an amount that's greater than the total balance. You know, so I can't withdraw $10. If I have zero in my account right now, I can't withdraw $10. Okay? Now, if I could access that property directly, um, then I, I can manipulate that and make that happen. But here, uh, when I go through the withdrawal, because there's some steps it's going through, I admit that this isn't anything that would be legitimate for a real bank. If it is, let me, let me start an account there. <laughs> but it's to give you the example. There's more to do, so it's better to let the function deal with the private property than having the developer do it themselves. And I know this is a little tricky in your mind, at least it is to me, because you would probably think, well, couldn't I just go into that and change it? You know, that little class? I mean, how easy would it be as a developer just to change all that, right? And you probably could, but think about it. When you, have you guys ever, Import any libraries or import any classes for stuff? Yes. Okay, we can say yes or no in the class. It's okay. All right. Why did, it, did any of you, and any of the projects you worked on, why did anyone ever import anything? Library class, whatever it is, I don't care. Why did any of you even do it? I well, didn't want to write it myself, right? What else? It's required in C. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> required in Java, too. You know, you got that whole thing. But I, I think that's the easiest one to say. You know, we, we go out and we get some widget or we want to do something, you know, we want to do X, and our programming by default doesn't do X, but man, if we install this little widget or we get this little class, whatever, it allows us to do X. And we don't want to write all that crap ourselves, right. so that's what we do. Well, if this was something that you were to be using, then you know what? You're going to get specifications with that particular thing that you, that widget or that little thing that you're, that library you're using. You're going to see, here's the public methods I, that you can use and that you can mess with and you're going to work with it. Could you break into the thing <coughs> and manipulate it if it was in PHP? Yeah, you probably could. Well, it's going to be miles of freaking code and it's going to be a nightmare and you might as well just done it yourself. Yeah. Okay. So that's what this is all about is when you look at this simple example, it almost seems stupid. Like, if I could just change that myself as a developer, what, why do I need all these naming conventions? Well, because in the real world, you're gonna download some class that you're gonna use, or library, whatever it is, it's gonna be thousands of lines of code, and you're not gonna care one bit uh, how it does it. All you care about is what do I gotta do to use it, and does it work? Right. But that's it. I've, I've used libraries before. You think I have any idea what those libraries are doing? Nope. <laughs> And do you think I care? Nope. You're in my Android class, right? You want to house here in my Android class? Okay, yes. All right. I'm sorry. I should, <laughs> I should notice that. Um, okay. <clears throat> we're, we're dealing with right now, what are we doing? We're, we're requiring, importing a lot of stuff in. Just in the beginning stage, we're importing a lot of stuff in, right? Okay. Do you think I know or care what half those imports we're doing, uh, how they're written? No, it's all I black, have no idea. Black box. No, I probably, I probably just blew my full credibility to YouTube right now. You guys are black. He doesn't know anything. No, but the reality is because I don't care. I trust you. I know, what it, I know what it's supposed to do, and I'm not going to go through thousands of lines of code to check what Google did. You know, my so. friend said it was good, so. That's it. And sometimes do we screw up? Do sometimes we import a library and we find out, oh, there's a major flaw with this? Yep. Yeah. Can anyone say WordPress? Yeah. WordPress is built on PHP. WordPress allows people to write all sorts of third-party stuff and inject into their web pages. <laughs> WordPress gets crashed all the time because people write crappy stuff. So anyway, my, my diatribes are great, aren't they? I make the world such a positive place. I'll tell you what, it's 6.55, we might as well just stop here, take 10 minutes, come back at 7.05, and we'll just start looking at the inheritance. We're almost done with this. Um, do some that inheritance and uh, yeah. So finish up. So see you at seven uh, seven. What is it? Seven o'clock. Yeah. Seven o'clock. This is a good place to stop right here.